Hello crafty friends, welcome back to Handmade Not Hallmark, Amanda here. I want to welcome all of those who are returning subscribers and anybody that is new here to my channel. I create handmade greeting cards. I've been doing it for roughly seven years, six, seven years. So today I thought would be a good time to maybe go over some of my favorite tools, supplies, anything that I use kind of on a regular basis, um, things that I always link to in my videos. I link down in the description boxes after each of my videos. And they're just things that I like to go to often. Um, they're not necessary to have all of these in certain situations with certain techniques or styles of card making. Some of these items might be something that you really might want to pick up. Um, but other things you could probably live without, but they're things that I personally like. Um, these are things that I have all purchased on my own. I am not affiliated with anyone. Nobody has sent me any of these things. I just wanted to share my opinions and what I personally like to use when I'm crafting. Again, these are just things that I like. If you don't like them, that's obviously your opinion, um, which is, you know, welcome here. Any suggestions of any products that might be a good alternative or anything like that. I'm not going to be talking about cost or prices of things. I will link below to everything that I have. Um, I'm pretty sure everything that I have is still um, available. If the particular item I have is not available, I will link to something that is as close of a match as possible. So we'll try, I'll try my best on that. So again, these are things that I use on an everyday basis. This is going to be kind of like a little bit of a mini series and I might break them up into kind of clumped videos. I'm going to focus on actual kind of tools that I definitely use all the time. And then I'm going to kind of shift into like adhesives, inks, um, you know, different things like that tools I use with certain products those sorts of things. And I think I'm also going to do a couple of series uh, where like my favorite color combinations when it comes to Copic markers, um, Zig markers, my favorite um, colored pencil combinations, those sorts of things. So stay tuned because those videos are going to be coming. Um, these are going to kind of lead into um, my next upcoming series, which is my Christmas in July, which is a huge series. Um, I get a lot of uh, great support and likes and a lot of inspiration um, for you guys in the month of July so look out for that as well but this particular series is going to be focused on my favorite tools and some of the favorite ways that I like to use some of the products so the first thing I'm going to start with is some of my go-to products that I constantly use I may not mention them all the time in the bottom of my videos I do link to them um, but I may not mention them directly, but I use them in my videos and you'll probably see them a lot. So the first thing that, sorry, if you, if my voice gets loud and soft, I'm using like a little microphone. The first time I've used a microphone on this. So I apologize if my voice gets a little funny. So the first, I have everything kind of laid out next to me. So if you hear a lot of rattling, it's because I'm moving things around. The first tool that I have that I use almost every time is my Misty tool. So let me zoom out just a little bit here. Is my Misty tool. Oops, sorry. There we go. Okay. <laughs> and this is a Misty stamp positioner. There are a ton of stamp positioners out on the market. This is not a required tool to craft with. You can still use stamps. Um, Sorry, I'm digging and I just dropped something. <laughs> okay, you can still use stamps, stamp with things without a Misty. They have acrylic blocks. I still own acrylic blocks. I sometimes will pull them out if I'm just doing small stamping or um, I need to restamp something that I need to recolor or anything like that. Um, I use them as weights to lay on top of things uh, anything like that, they're still usable. A Misty is not required. It is a nice commodity to have, but it's not required for crafting. But I use mine a lot, um, especially whenever I'm doing double stamping or I want to get a really good impression 
or I'm doing mass producing, those sorts of things, I like to have the Misty tool, which is a really nice tool. It comes with a small round magnet, which I have lost. <laughs> I have no idea where it went to. It has been missing for a while now. So I purchased one of their bar magnets. Um, this is actually made by My Sweet Petunia, the same company does the Misty. And I just put some tape on it to help kind of lift it up because it is a really strong magnet. And if, if you don't have like, it's it can be hard to lift up. So I just put some tape on it. But um, it comes with uh, some sheets and it's a rubber foam mat on the inside. So you want to leave the foam mat in in order to stamp with clear polymer stamps and take the foam mat out to stamp with um, red rubber. But that's a whole different topic story. But this is just one of the tools that I use almost every time I create a card. Almost every time. Okay, the next tool that I use every time I make a card is my score pal. And this is literally every time I make a card because this is what I use to create my card bases. I use it to score them at the appropriate size for either top folding, A2 size, slimline, anything like that. Oh, sorry about my cord getting in the way there. I'll try to tuck it out of the way. I don't have a freestanding wireless mic, so anyway. Um, but I use this for scoring all of my, uh, my card bases, like I said. And this is a good tool to have because it helps with the cracking along the edge. So this is just a scratch piece that I have. It's got a big cut down it. So I'm just going to use an example. So you could easily just fold it in half and press it down and score it. Sometimes you can shift and it can move. So that can cause an issue. But with using the scoring buddy, you just line it up in here. You find the location and you score it. So this particular tool came with a scoring tool. Um, I used this one for years and um, it worked out just fine. The only thing is, is sometimes whenever you would score with it, I'll give you an example here. I'm just gonna score in a random location because I'm gonna use the sheet to show you something else. So you just, right, works out fine. And it's when you go to fold it over and you go to press it down, I'm not sure if you can see it, it kind of leaves like this sheen on the cardstock. I'm not sure how well the camera's picking it up, but that's because it's almost like it's pressing the fibers down and it's, it's kind of just damaging the fibers of the paper. And that's what's leaving that sheen behind. And that doesn't look very nice on your cards, especially if you have like frames or, you know, using a color card base, anything like that. So to combat that, the other tool that I use all the time, instead of this one, like I said, this one works fine. There's nothing wrong with it. And, you know, I used to just kind of flip my cardstock over and use this as the front and I would score along the back because the back's not as important as the front. So it's an option. It works just fine. However, I switched to using a Teflon bone folder. This one in particular, I purchased off of Amazon. This one was a really affordable one. They're not super expensive. I mean, this one wasn't expensive. There are some out on the market that are really expensive, but this one was pretty affordable um, and it works great. It's got a nice sharp point on it. Maybe if it'll focus, probably not. And then it's got a rounded edge and a flat edge. So this is what you use to um, score with. So as an example, I'll show you here on this one. Um, it works the same as the other one. You just press it in and when you go to press it down, you don't get, oh, I wish this would focus, 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 maybe, you don't get that sheen like you do over on this one. So this side, you can see that sheen really, really well. And on this side, there's no sheen. And that's because this is made from Teflon. And the way it works with the paper is it doesn't room in the fibers of the paper. So this is another tool that I really, really recommend. Um, it's not necessary, but if you want to save up your money and purchase one, again, I'll have this particular one I purchased down in the description, along with some other options from other companies if you choose. But I really like this tool and it works out great. 
Um, the next tool that's not a necessity, but something that I really like is this um, crystal katana, or I guess it's not called a crystal katana anymore. It is an embellishment wand. And why? There we go. Now we're focused. Is an embellishment wand. So this end is kind of tacky. I Mine needs to be cleaned. It's not as tacky as it used to be. And this end kind of has a nice point on it. And it's used for um, using with embellishments like your sequins and things like that. Um, you can use it to pick them up and place them. Those sorts of things. Okay, so another great tool. Not necessary, but a nice tool. Another one that I used for a couple of years was this Marvy Jewel Picker which is another great option if you don't want to purchase this one. This one is a little on the higher end of price, but if you want to save up for it, it works. This one works well as, excuse me, this one works also. Um, it has two ends on it that are tacky. One is a bit larger than the other, and it works good as well for picking up, you know, embellishments and things like that. Um, you don't have to use these, you could use tweezers anything like that. But these are some tools that I really like to use because I get frustrated with sequins. Um, I have a hard time dealing with them. So these are really nice tools for myself. Um, some other tools that I really like that I use pretty often are reverse tweezers. Um, these are really nice tweezers for holding onto things. You know, if you're tying bows, if you're, you know, want to hold something for embossing, or if you've glued something down and you want to hold it in place, these are really nice because they're reverse. They grip onto things and they have a nice point on them. So you can use these to pick up embellishments if you like. I used to do that for a few years as well before I purchased the other tools, but this is a really nice tool as well. They make all sorts of these out on the market. These ones in particular are made by EK Success. Um, again, really nice tool, great one to have. Not necessary, but nice. Um, the next tool is a nice pair of fussy cutting scissors. Now, if you don't want to purchase dies or your art project in particular requires that you need to fussy cut something out or anything like that, a really nice pair of sharp scissors comes in handy. Um, these ones I've had since the start. These are by Fiskars. They're probably not as sharp as they used to be. They still work just fine. I use them for everything, really, instead of just setting them aside for fussy cutting. But um, a nice pair of sharp scissors is a great tool to have as well. Uh, last thing that I use all the time um, that is, I, I wouldn't say a necessity, but a really nice one to have if you use metal dies is a metal trimmer. These are just jewelry snips. Uh, I think I got these from Walmart. Um, but these work great for cutting apart your dies. You can easily bend them, but some, when they come packaged together, are hard to kind of bend apart. So these are really nice to have to snip them apart. So another tool that I like to use quite a bit whenever I'm using dies or anything like that is um, a nice pair of die cuts. Okay. Um, the next couple of items, actually, uh, I'll talk about this one. So the next thing is I have this, um, black, um, self-healing mat that I put down on my work surface. This one I use, it stays down all the time. Um, it's mostly used to protect the table that I'm on top of. The table that I'm on top of is actually my husband's. It is his, um, reloading bench. If you don't know what reloading is, I'm not going to get into it. It's... A process but this is his particular bench and he was kind enough to let me use this space to craft in and I wanted to protect the worktop so I purchased this mat to protect it and it works out great it keeps the table nice and it's a nice mat to work on has nice grid lines so um, a cutting mat or some sort of nice hard surface is a great thing to have as well so I use this all the time um, the next thing I like to use especially if I'm doing any kind of ink blending or using pastes or you know ink smushing anything like that is a silicone mat um, this one is made by tonic this is their easy clean mat it's heat resistant um, non-slip grip this is the 14 by 14 mat i had one uh, a few years ago and i completely destroyed it it had holes all through it 
because um, I used it for everything before I got this mat. So uh, this is a really nice mat. Again, it's coated and it works out great for ink blending and using all sorts of mixed media items. And it's got some stick on the back. Don't mind the dog here. Um, so whenever it's down, it doesn't shift. So another great tool to have, not necessary, but a nice tool that I like to use when I'm doing all sorts of things. So see if I can get this back in there. Probably not because it's going to be difficult. I like to keep it stored inside this tube just to protect it. And of course I got to re-roll it, but I'll fix that in a minute. Okay. I'm just looking at my little list here. Oh, um, paper trimmers. So I have my big paper trimmer that you guys may or may not have seen uh, a few times. I'll see if I can pull it out without pulling down all of my stuff. Cause I store it, I store it underneath everything um, just because it is super sharp and super dangerous. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, I zoomed out too far. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, I zoomed out way too far. Come on. There we go. Oh, so sorry. I don't know what's going on with my zoom. Okay, so I'm zoomed out as far as I can go. Ignore this over here. This is where I have my phone sitting. This is my little stand and I've got stuff stuck all to it. So ignore this part right here. So this is my really large paper trimmer. It is a cheapo from Walmart. I think I paid it $20 for it, but it works fantastic. Um, it is extremely sharp. So I am very, very careful with this thing. If you didn't know, uh, last year I sliced my fingers really, really bad with this. So yeah, I sliced my fingers really bad with this. I was crafting for a craft fair. I was trying to cut fabric with it and I sliced these two fingers in particular, very bad. I had to get stitches in both of them. I'll insert a picture in here somewhere that's not too graphic um so yeah this works fantastic it is extremely sharp so please be careful with your crafting tools because yes you can hurt yourself i have poked myself with these i have cut myself with scissors i have okay <laughs> crafting is not supposed to be dangerous but it can be so please be careful. Um, if you do decide to purchase this one, it is extremely sharp and I'm sure all the other ones out on the market are extremely sharp as well. So just be cautious. Don't do a me <laughs> and cut your fingers. So a big paper trimmer is a nice thing to have to cut down your card bases for your, you know, your card stocks, um, making panels, you know, if you want to pre-cut everything, it's great. Um, but this is one I use and it's just from Walmart. It works great. Um, oh, okay, I get that put away out of the way so it's nice and safe. So let me zoom back in here. There we go. The other little cutting tool I have is this mini Tim Holtz and tonic mini trimmer. Um, this was the really teeny weeny one. I really like this for just quick cuts. Um, it's sharp too. Um, it doesn't have a lock on it, which kind of you know, but I keep it tucked away so no little fingers can get a hold of it. But um, I really like this one because it fits nicely on my desk. It doesn't cut the big sheets, but it cuts enough of the things that I like to use here and there. So this is another great tool to have as a nice paper trimmer. I used to have the Fiskars ones that had the uh, kind of like the wire on it. Every they're still really great tools. I just upgraded to a regular paper trimmer, but still work great. I love this one too. Um, try to think the last of the actual tools that I have that I like to use on a reg, I guess a regular basis is a heat gun. Um, this is the Wagner heat gun. I don't want to say that this is super expensive cause I got mine off of Amazon and I got a pretty good deal on it, but, um, a heat tool is really important for heat embossing in particular. Um, if you need to dry your project, and, you know, if you're in a hurry or anything like that, I love using my heat tool. I also use it for other things too. I like to use it to get stickers off of like ceramics if I purchase them or, you know, if I want to remove a sticker off a gift or anything like that, I like to use my heat gun for that. Um, we have used this to melt wires 
to seal them. So a really handy tool to have around for crafting, also for your everyday home use. Again, this is a heat gun. It gets hot. So there's lots of warnings on it. Please be careful. I have slightly burned myself. Um, I guess I could say I'm accident prone, but um, so again, it does get very hot. This one in particular has two settings, which I really like. Um, I use the, the second setting the most, but um, a really great tool uh, for all sorts of, you know, elements with crafting, but mostly for heat embossing. I'm really glad that I upgraded to this particular brand. Um, the one I had before was, was great. I loved it. It worked out fine, but I think I had it so long it started to kind of take a really long time to heat up just because I think it was old. So that's why I upgraded, but, um, this Wagner works great and, uh, I do highly recommend it. Okay. So the very last tool that I use is a, um, a die cutting machine. Now I didn't start out with a die cutting machine. I was probably into crafting. I'm going to say a few months. I think I got through my first holiday Christmas cards um, without a die cutting machine. Um, I did all of my cards by hand and I just cut them out. I didn't have any dies. So it is not necessary to have a die cutting machine if you want to make cards. Now, if you want to use dies, um, you know, like your, your metal dies, whether it's these thinlets or the other ones that are out on the market, a die cutting machine is a must because the dies press into the paper and cut them. So, uh, having a die cutting machine is important. I recently upgraded to this Spellbinders Platinum machine. Um, I, well, the reason I purchased this one because it folds up. Um, I have a very limited crafting space. I have a small area in the corner of my bedroom that I use for my crafting and storage is a must. I try to keep things very well organized because I have such a small space. So you don't have to have these big elaborate um, craft spaces, which in my dreams, I would love to have one maybe someday. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if you do that full time for a job, kudos to you, um, that you get to do what you love for a job. Um, but because mine's more of a hobby at this point, um, having a large craft room isn't really practical, um, in my space right now. So I work with what space that I have. Um, and I'm not, you know, hating on anybody, you know, if I could have a big dream craft room, I totally would. Um, but for me working with products that can be stored really easily, um, is a must for me. So this particular machine, the fact that it folds up is really great. Um, it does come with plates and things like that. I just have those stored elsewhere, but a die cutting machine is a, um, I don't like to say it's a must. It's a really nice commodity to have. Um, you can get by without one, but if you want to use the dies, um, that, you know, are standalones or with coordinating sets, a die cutting machine is something that you did definitely need. Um, so that is the last of the tools that I use on an almost every time basis when I create cards. Um, there are a few things that I might use here and there, but those are the actual tools themselves and you can class these as tools. Um, they're not, I don't, wouldn't class these as supplies. These are tools. So the next video is going to focus on more of some supplies that I like to use. So that kind of goes along the lines of my favorite adhesives, some of my favorite inks for stamping, um, some of the, my favorite things I like to use to embellish my cards, whether it's add shine or it's to add, um, you know, interest, those sorts of things. Those are going to be the next, I guess, part in this video series is going to be my favorite supplies. So these were my favorite tools and I can't wait to share with you guys more of my favorite things. I've been wanting to do this series for a while now 
and I'm really glad I'm having an opportunity to do that while I'm kind of like in between my crafting mojo. So I figured I would share with you guys some of my favorite things. And if you like this video, please hit the like button as well as the subscribe. All of your support is greatly appreciated. All of, you know, that goes towards me being able to create this content for you all. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them down in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next part in my My Favorite Things series, and I'll catch up with you guys again real soon. Bye.